Ken Lynch 2 Dog Days Game Short Review. Lynch is now the protagonist. He has a girl girlfriend and he's living in Shanghai. He invites Kane for one last heist, but before they get to it, things go horribly wrong and they find themselves hunted by the Shanghai underground. Basically, this one does not have a lot of focus on the plot. It's basically just you have to survive and that's kind of it. The ending is not much of an ending an ending the game just kind of stops when you get to you know it makes sense it's a stopping point but there's no tragedy no irony to the ending there's nothing that compelling to it levels are quite linear and everything does take place in shanghai so you kind of get tired of your surroundings but with that said there are some memorable levels there are a couple of new cool features like highlighting the weapons in your vicinity because you're changing weapons much more often than in the first one. But other than that, the cover function is pretty much the only thing that survived going from the first game to this game, and it's not that well done. It's kind of awkward. You can't order anyone around anymore, you can't pick up, you can't swap weapons with your allies, you can't pick up extra ammo, f ammo from them, and that's kind of, you know, there, there are no twists to keep the story going, it just kind of, it's basically just out for survival. With that said, that aspect is pretty well done. The game is quite intense, and you really do feel like everyone is out to get you, you know. Like, you really have to fight just to survive, and if you don't keep moving, you will die, and that's just it. The game can be quite brutal and disturbing, although the worst of the violence is blurred out as part of the visual style of the game. It's very much like a handheld documentary kind of thing, where it will also blur... There's a kind of lens flare from light sources and such. If you find that the camera is too bouncy for you to handle, and many will, there is a function in the options menu that sets it to steady cam instead, and that works quite well, then it's much more easy to handle. The game can be a tad dark, and it's certainly grimy and gritty, but I didn't personally have any problems finding my way and seeing stuff and such. The AI of the enemies is a bit hit and miss. Multiplayer has some new stuff, but it's not terribly different from what we had before. You can also now play the Fragile Alliance multiplayer mode in just, you know, offline, you know, just against AIs. And that's fun enough, at least. The weapon selection is pretty cool. All in all, it's decent. It's just really short, only three hours. And not that necessary of a sequel. If you like this review and want a more detailed one, check below, it's there as a video response. If not, it'll be in the description box. I've reviewed other parts of this series, the links are in the description box. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.